Welcome to today's chat with the superintendent webinar. I'm Jackie Tisdale and I'll be your moderator today. Before uh, we go to our panelists, let me just give you a very brief overview of logistics if you haven't participated with us before. The webinar is 30 minutes long, including presentations and Q&A. All your microphones are muted except for the presenters, and you can use your question and chat module to type questions to the moderator, and you'll have a chance to provide uh, feedback and comments <coughs> after the webinar. And this is being recorded, and the webinar will be archived on our website at APSB.org. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to our superintendent, David Alexander. Well, good afternoon. I want to welcome everybody. I want to thank those of you that joined us, and I want to thank any of you that happened to listen to this after the fact. We appreciate your interest in the things that we're doing in Ascension Parish Schools, and we certainly always welcome an opportunity to give you information and also to answer some questions. I'm excited today that we have three critical programs uh, in our school system that folks may know, not know a whole lot about, and so I think it's going to be a, a great webinar, a great learning opportunity for everybody. And then we hope to learn from you at the end of this thing through some of your questions. Today we have joining us Mary McMahon. She's an instructional supervisor by title, but she also is a significant district level leader in our early childhood programs. And she's going to go first here in just a, a few seconds. Following Mary is going to be Lynn Hathaway, who is currently the principal at Apple Digital Academy, which is uh, an, uh, an academy that's run for alternative services to students. And Lynn's going to explain you to that. And then Julian Serla, who is the principal of our Early College Option Program, which started about five years ago. And so we look forward to hearing from them, and we look forward to hearing from you. So I'm going to toss it off to Mary at this time. Thank you, Superintendent Alexander. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you uh, for having us today. I want to talk to you a little bit today about our early childhood programs in Ascension Parish. Um, in Ascension Parish, we offer several early childhood options for families with children aged birth to four years old. Our school system is one piece of a larger early childhood uh, network in um, the school system, we serve as the lead agent for that uh, network. Our network consists of school-based classrooms for three and four-year-old children, as well as private child care centers in our community that accept public funding for children aged birth to four. Um, these public, <coughs> uh, these private child care centers um, accept CCAP funding, which is a type of funding that assists low-income families with child care. The goal of our early childhood programs in Ascension Parish is to provide your children with high-quality interactions that will develop their social-emotional, their cognitive, their language, physical, and intellectual skills. We're very proud um, that all of our school-based three- and four-year-old classes are staffed uh, with a 10 to 1 ratio, meaning that your three or four year old child would have no more than 20 children in their classroom and two adults in that classroom. All of our teachers in our public school sites are certified specifically in the area of early childhood, and all of our paraprofessionals that assist in our classrooms have CDA certifications, as do all of the teachers and paras in the private child care centers within our network. If you're following us today um, with our slide presentation, the slide that you'll see there is our timeline for um, enrolling our children for the upcoming 2018-2019 school year. Um, we are accepting applications through May 15th. Um, if you did not have the opportunity to apply during one of our enrollment events at one of our local school sites, you may continue to um, register through May the 15th. The website address that you see on your screen, www.ascensionearlychildhood.org, that is where you can find the online application. Um, once we meet that May 15th deadline, we will start determining eligibility for our students. Um, the eligibility is based on income. 
Um, and then in June and July, we will be notifying families of their acceptance into our program. If you uh, can't find this website address or if you can't remember it, just go to Ascension Parish Schools website and click on the tab that says Other Programs, and our Early Childhood um, link is can be found there. Um, we have several different types of funding and programming um, within our early childhood. Uh, we have Head Start classes. We have Head Start classes for three-year-olds and four-year-olds. All of our three-year-old classes are located in Donaldsonville, but we do accept children from other attendance zones into that three-year-old program, provided that the parent can provide the transportation to Donaldsonville. <coughs> Our four-year-old programs are located um, at, our four-year-old Head Start programs are located at four schools, uh, three of which are in the Gonzales area and one in Donaldsonville. And these are open to families that meet um, the federal poverty <clears throat> guideline of 130 percent. Um, our public pre-K programs, these are our four-year-old programs. We have these at all of our, we have them at 15 public primary school sites this year. Next year, we will have them at all of our um, primary school sites. In order to qualify for this, one of the um, criteria is that the children are four years old by September 30th of the school year that they will be attending. Um, and this is open to families that meet the income requirements and to children that have qualifying IEPs through our LeBlanc Special Services Office. As I mentioned before, um, for our children that are younger than three and four years old, many of our private child care centers in our community are part of our network, and they do accept children from birth to age five, and they do accept CCAP, um, which provides you with tuition assistance if you are eligible for that. Just to give you an example, um, I said earlier that it is an income-based program. So if you were applying for a Head Start program and you were a family of two, we would be looking at your monthly gross income and the limit on that is $1,372. <clears throat> However, for that same family of two, we could go up to $2,538 and that family would apply for one of our publicly funded pre-K four-year-old classes. For a family of four, the income limit for Head Start is 2,092, and for our other publicly funded classrooms, 3,870. So that just gives you a general idea. If you're not sure if you would qualify or not, you may go to the ascensionearlychildhood.org site, and the information <coughs> about specific income amounts can be found there. These are the documents that you would need um, when you do the online application. You'll be asked to upload these. All you have to do is take a photograph with your um, phone or with an iPad and upload them. We will need a birth certificate. And if the person who has uh, guardianship of the child is not the person listed on the birth certificate, we'll need proof of guardianship. We need updated immunization records proof of residence that you live within Ascension Parish, uh, proof of income, and a valid email address. If you do not have an email address, someone at our school site can certainly help you um, set up a free email address. When you are providing your proof of income, um, the most desirable thing that we were looking for is for two consecutive paycheck stubs for each working parent for the last two months. However, if you do not have that, we do have other um, documents that we can accept, such as your tax documents, letters from your employer, um, statements of Social Security, uh, things like that. If your family qualifies for SNAP, which is uh, the food stamp program, your child will automatically qualify for our program, and all we will need for income documentation is that SNAP document. Our programs are income-based, and spaces are limited. Um, 
we do encourage you to get your applications in by that May 15th deadline. That will be when we will be doing our income eligibility. Um, those students whose families have their documents in by the 15th will be given first priority. <coughs> After that time, if we have available seats, we will continue to accept applications until all seats are filled. Um, and we do, the, the site to apply is open all school year. Um, and so there is, uh, even after school begins, often we do have um, available seats. So I do encourage you, um, our pre-K program is a wonderful program. We've spent a lot of time uh, developing the program and um, we really would like to serve your child. Again, www.ascensionearlychildhood.org. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Hathaway? Hi, this is Lynn Hathaway. I'm the principal out at Apple Digital Academy, and we are located in Darrow, Louisiana. And today, I'm going to talk with you about the different programs that we offer out at Apple. We have three different programs right now. We have our alternative learning program, and this is a temporary learning program for students who've been expelled across the parish. We also offer an Ascension Pathways program. This is for high school students who are working to pass the HiSET exam. This would be something formerly was known as the GED. And we also have a newer program, the Blended Learning Program. And this is a voluntary virtual program for um, Ascension Parish students. We have a program for the high school students come through the Darrow campus at Apple. But our K through eight students run through one of our satellite classrooms, which is located centrally at Gonzales Primary School. So first I'm gonna talk with you a little bit about the alternative program, and then I'll follow that with the Ascension Pathways program. But I'll spend the majority of my time talking about the distance learning program, since that's the newest. So the goals for our alternative learning program are to provide expelled students with educational and behavioral support so that they can successfully return to their home-based school at the end of the first opportunity. Um, for some students, this can be as short as 45 school days. For others, it may be longer, 90 school days, uh, two semesters, or four semesters. We try to address any social, behavioral issues at school with counseling and social skills training. Um, but we also reach out to community providers for drug and alcohol counseling when that's needed for some of our students' support. Um, during that expulsion stay, we have fully certified teachers, and we run from K all the way through 12. Mainly, we serve students in the 6th grade through 12th grade category, um, but our teachers, they provide um, monitoring of online coursework, intervention, strategies, and classroom instruction. Uh, we do use an online curriculum so that we can provide all necessary courses that students need as they come to us. And students are able to access those courses um, at home, at school, anywhere there's internet-based um, access. And our online courses, we've worked, our teachers have worked hard to customize those so that they follow the district uh, benchmark pacing guides and requirements so that your child can be on track um, in order to return to their home-based school where they need to be. Um, as I said, our students can accept, access courses 24-7. Um, they are required to attend school daily at the alternative program, and that gives them the opportunity to get teacher support and work in small group and also receive some individualized instruction to uh, help them with their coursework Transportation is provided um, through satellite bus stops located across the parish. Next, I'll talk to you about the Ascension Pathways program. This program, if you know what the GED is, it's now called the High Set. And so this is for students 16 and older who have fallen behind in meeting their graduation criteria and this gives them an opportunity to catch up in their reading and their language and their mathematics skills. 
In order to successfully complete that program, they do that by passing the HiSET exam. Uh, app students also explore careers and can obtain skills in some industry-based certifications and credentials while they're studying for the HiSET exam. The blended learning program is our distance learning program for the parish. Uh, this is for K through 12 students and families, uh, families who are choosing to seek a virtual program for their, stu uh, their children can use the blended learning program. We use an online curriculum, but again, it's fully backed by our certified teachers across all content areas. Students can access their courses 24 seven, um, but they, at the high school level, they must come to our campus in order to complete testing requirements. The goals of the blended learning program are to provide at K through 12 pathway to a high school diploma. We're able to give students all courses necessary in order to earn a high school diploma all the way from kindergarten through the 12th grade. Students who complete all of their graduation requirements are able to walk with their senior class at their home-based high school. The blended learning program also provides support to families for temporary situations that might arise. For example, during the flood, Apple was able to provide virtual services to students who may have been displaced from their homes during that period for health <clears throat> issues that may arise for students that might be temporary or long term. Occasionally, family crisis situations um, would force a student to need the blended learning situation. Students who struggle with large, large campuses or have outside commitments to other activities. We've had dancers, um, actors, athletes who've used the blended program to work with their uh, schedule outside of school. The blended learning program provides parents and students with lots of choices. Because the courses are accessible 24-7, Students can work when the time is convenient for their family. Most of the work can be completed online. However, at the high school level, students are required to come in to take their test at the Apple campus. Also, if students are struggling, they can receive support from the teacher in person or through online interventions that are available from their teachers. We do offer transportation from the high, for the high school students only, and that's easily accessible from all high schools in Ascension Parish. Students transport in and out daily if needed. Our BLP K through eight program is the program I spoke earlier of, and the classroom for that is actually located as a satellite classroom right now at Gonzales Primary. The BLP K-8 program functions very similar to a homeschool situation in which the students can access their curricula online and are able to receive support from our instructor, mainly virtually, um, but we do have the classroom available. Almost all coursework can be completed at home, except at the middle school level, students do come in for district uh, benchmarks. All students are required to go in person for statewide testing. The BLP High School program, uh, all testing is done at Apple campus so that we can proctor those tests. And this requires not only district benchmarks and statewide assessments, but all course testing happens at Apple. Typically, it requires a BLP high school student to attend at Apple at least once a week in order to keep up with the testing demands. We have a computer lab available for all students and BLP students have access to high school content teachers for support all throughout the school days. So the mission at Apple is to provide a, a positive, meaningful learning experience for students who have not been successful in traditional school settings, and through our three programs, we're able to provide support to many at-risk students across the parish. Now I'll turn it over to Mr. Serla. The uh, Early College Option Program, which is currently in its uh, about to finish its fifth year, is a partnership between the Ascension Public School System and River Parish's Community College. The Early College Option Program provides opportunities for incoming ninth graders that are enrolled in one of our four high schools to not only obtain their high school diploma during their four years, but also earn an associate's degree in humanities from River Parish's Community College. 
Although each child in our program is officially enrolled in their home high school, all of their high school and college classes take place at the RPCC campus. Every time they take a college course, they're also earning high school credit for it as well, and what we call it as dual enrollment. They're working on two transcripts, two GPAs at the same time. And that is how we can give them the opportunity to get the two-year associate's degree and the four-year high school diploma in the same amount of time. Uh, we do provide uh, transportation in the form of a shuttle system. They would ride their buses from their home high school, uh, excuse me, from their home to their home high school. They can get on another bus and come to RPCC, and we do the same thing in the afternoon. And we also have the traditional uh, school lunch that the uh, high schools have as well. That is an option for our students. Our program is set up on a four by four block schedule. Uh, in ninth and 10th grade, uh, each of our students takes three high school classes and one college class per semester. Students are not allowed to take any courses at their home high school. They must be at early college option for the entire school day. However, when our students reach the 11th and 12th grade, they are only taking college classes. They are still high school students. They still have to adhere to high school policies and procedures, and they're still earning high school credits towards their high school diploma, but they are only taking college classes, which means that they follow the college calendar as opposed to the school district calendar. As a parent of an early college option student, communication between the parent and the college professors is not allowed. However, as the principal uh, and as, as with our assistant principal, we are the liaisons between the parents and the professors. Um, we do have a working uh, relationship with many of the professors on the campus, and we also have access to the ninth and 10th grade students when it comes to their college grades. The reason that is is because all of our ninth and 10th grade students, when they are in their college class, are only with early college option students, so we can access those grades. However, in 11th and 12th grade, they are blended with the regular R RPCC students, and we do not have access to those grades. However, our students do, and parents at any time can require their students to log into Canvas, which is what RPCC uses for grading, to show you uh, their grades. Uh, professors are not required to update their grades in a timely manner, as high school students do, but most of them uh, do that. And we, again, we communicate with them on a regular basis. Uh, to get updates and information as much as we possibly can. Since all of our students are officially enrolled in their home high school, they can participate in most uh, activities. Uh, they can go to dances, go to prom, get a class ring, earn an academic jacket. They can participate in after school clubs and in most sports. Um, however, uh, there are certain sports that have athletic PE and that school and that coach may require the student to be there for athletic PE. That is something that is decided upon by the high school principal and the coach of that sport. We encourage all of our eighth graders who are interested in the program to reach out to those coaches at those schools, let them know that they want to play a sport there for them, but they are also interested in the early college option program, and that school uh, will make the decision on whether the student must uh, attend athletic PE or will be allowed to miss it. If they are required to attend athletic PE, they cannot do the early college option program. To enroll into our program, students must apply during the eighth grade because they must start with us day one as a ninth grader. That is the only way that we can guarantee that they have the opportunity to complete their high school and college requirements in the four years. The criteria for a qualification will be but not limited to uh, seventh and eighth grade uh, LEAP scores, middle school grades, uh, and GPA. If enrollment requests exceed limit of available seats, students may be selected based on academic rankings. Uh, the Early College Option Program has a memorandum of understanding with River Parish Community College that allows up to 400 students to enroll into the program. Determination of qualification will be made in late May and early June. The application deadline is coming up. It's April 30th. Uh, 2018. You can always come to our office at RPCC or email us or call and we can email you uh, an application. Any uh, applications that we receive after April 30th will be put on a waiting list. Those students who do qualify uh, will be called at the end of May and if they still want to do it, they do have the option of not doing it over the phone. If they still want to do it, we will need a parent and that student 
or guardian to come in. We'll schedule a time in early June. You'll come in, sign some paperwork. One of those things that you will sign is what's called a one-year agreement. That means that the student is locked into the program for one year and cannot leave during the school year unless they uh, withdraw from the school district or do not meet certain academic requirements uh, that are needed to remain in the program. However, at the end of that one year, that agreement expires and the students and parents have the option of returning for another year if they have met all requirements or they have the um, option to leave the program and go to their traditional high school. If they do that, all of their credits are already there. Their college credits follow them wherever they go. So any student can opt out of the program at the end of ninth, 10th, or 11th grade, but they must start on day one of ninth grade with us. Students are required to remain on pace, not only for their high school diploma, but also for their associate degree each semester. And if a student fails to remain on pace, or refuses to enroll in necessary repeat classes, they will be required uh, to exit the program. The school district will cover the cost of the tuition, the college textbooks, and the general fee list for all college classes. However, students will still be required to pay some of the traditional high school fees, such as a lab fee, supply fee, ID fee. And of course, we are also part of the one-to-one -one program in our school district, and each one of our students will receive a, a laptop and you have the option of purchasing the insurance for that laptop. However, any student who must repeat a college course will have to fund the cost of the tuition, of the college fees, and the college textbooks for repeating the course. All right, at this time, we'll move to our question and um, answer session. I want to remind our viewers to please use your chat module to, to type in some questions. Um, our first question, and, and before I start, I want to say we did have a little bit of technical difficulty with some slides. Um, don't worry, we're going to um, upload the PowerPoint slides to our website, so you'll be able to download all the slides after this. Um, and also, we're going to extend um, the webinar for about five minutes to make sure that we have time to answer questions. Our first question is, um, how do you register for di distance learning, and is there a device so, uh, supplied like you would in a traditional school? So for the distance learning program, that enrollment begins at the, with home-based school enrollment. So the school that is the school that would you would normally attend if you were in traditional schooling, that's where you begin, and the program starts with an application. Uh, it's very easy to fill out, but it starts with the principal's recommendation for your child to attend the blended learning program. And that's for K all the way through 12. Students are Accept, do have access to one-to-one -to -one just as any other Ascension Parish student would have and those all come through the home base school as well. Thank you. Our next question is um, how many uh, you had mentioned in the early college program that you have a cap of 400. How many are currently in the program and how many spots are open for this incoming year? We currently have 345 enrolled. That includes 38 seniors. So we know we're going to lose the 38 seniors. That'll bring us to 307. What we don't know at this point is what specific students may choose to opt out and which specific students have not met their academic requirements and will be required uh, to opt out. Uh, we currently have um, just a shot shade under 100 applications on file, and we usually get a big push uh, right before the deadline. So at this time, I cannot give you an exact idea of how many seats we have. It looks, it's looking like it's going to be about maybe 120 spots. But again, we may have 160 applications uh, by, by the deadline. And if we have uh, more spots, uh, excuse me, if we have more students available than spots, then we will not have to rank them academically and to be able to accept them. Our next question is also about early college option. Are the college credits earned in this program accepted at most large universities? And what is the difference between an AP college credit class taken at a traditional high school and the early college program? Okay, as far as the transfer of credits, all of our students are attempting to attain a degree that's called a Louisiana transfer degree in humanities. And that means that these credits that they earn for that degree will transfer to any college in Louisiana. The question is always going to be, which of those credits will actually apply 
to the bachelor's degree that the student is seeking. For example, we had a student who graduated with us with our first cohort last year who was accepted in the engineering program at LSU. He earned his 60 uh, credit hours to earn his Louisiana transfer degree in humanities, but because of the engineering degree that he chose to pursue, only 30 of those 60 credits actually applied to the degree. Still saves him a year of college, but again, it depends on the bachelor's degree that the child is seeking. When you leave the state, it gets a little bit more complicated because every state has its own requirements as well. Uh, what was the other question? Uh, if, if it was treated the same way as AP college oh, credit yes. courses. Other um, high and, yeah. Uh, in the early college option program, uh, when students take an AP course, they do take one AP course. It is taught by one of the Ascension Public School teachers. At the end of that course, they take a test, and if they make a certain score on that test, then they earn the college credit for that course. When they're taking a college class within our program, that college class is being taught by a college professor. And although they can, we, they'll be earning high school credit, it is completely taught by the professor at the college level. That is the difference between the two. You mentioned at the early college program that high school students can still participate in some of their uh, home school activities, athletics and clubs. Is that the same for um, some of the Apple programs, in particular the online or virtual learning? That's dependent upon the, the needs of the actual activity. Um, we have had um, some that work out that's really a principal's uh, decision and when they're applying into that program they would need to meet and see if um, the you know whatever the requirements for the activity were would match up with uh, the school's day and uh, you know the activities some have in the past but it can be unique to, to different situations and our last question is about early childhood um, you have a deadline uh, coming up, I believe May 15th, for uh, your online application. What happens if someone moves to the area over the summer? Do they still have the opp opportunity to apply for the pre-K programs? And let's also talk about the kindergarten programs for the same thing. Yes, absolutely. Um, the May 15th deadline is just a deadline that we've set so that um, we can begin to look at the applications that we have and fill the spots that we have. Um, rarely are all of our seats filled on that first round of eligibility determination. Um, and so certainly after that deadline, we would continue to accept applications. Um, we do have a limited number of seats, so there is no, you know, infinite number of spots available as there are in other grade levels. Um, but if someone moves into the area, you know, they would would certainly be able to apply. That portal is open all school year. So throughout the course of the school year, for example, just a few weeks ago, we had a student that dropped from one of our classes that moved out of our district, and we were able to pick up another student and fill that spot with that child. So um, certainly do not not apply because the deadline has passed. Kindergarten, and you asked we had about a kindergarten? Yeah, kindergarten, each, each school site had their kindergarten registration um, event last week. Each individual school um, will have days set aside during the summer where they will have additional kindergarten registration days. And usually the few days about the week before school begins, the schools will also have kindergarten uh, registration. It'll be unique to each school, so um, parents should call or look at the school where they live, the attendance zone um, where they live, look at that school's website, and those particular days should be on that school's website. I know we're a little bit over, but we had a couple questions just submitted, um, if we can try to get to them quickly. Uh, the first is, is it possible to attend some of academic classes on your home-based school and do some of the virtual learning? Like, is there a way to do both, or is it either your home-based school or the virtual learning program? Well, the main 
courses do run through the virtual program, but occasionally we have had students who, if, if the scheduling will work, and again, this is something that typically runs back through the principal, um, students do take in-person courses at home-based schools. For example, I currently have a student who's taking health science too at one of the high schools in addition to all of the other courses that he takes virtually. And the last question, um, can you explain how early college students are ranked academically um, for their home schools? How is that how does that work when they graduate from their home schools but they're an early college student? Well, when we look at uh the various uh criteria, we're looking at their LEAP scores, we're looking at uh uh their their grades and their courses. You're talking about graduation graduation right? Oh wait, I'm sorry, I'm I misunderstood. Did I misunderstand the question? Say again, please. How you rank um, college students at their home high school with their in the early college program academic rank for when they're graduating? Oh, for when they graduate. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So they earn a GPA uh, based on their coursework at early college, just like they do back in their high school. And where those courses uh, receive honors credits, they're given a weighted GPA, they're given a unweighted GPA, and at the end of their career, they are ranked in amongst their peers uh, as if they were back in that building. Great. Well, that's the, all the time we have. Um, Superintendent Alexander, if you would like to close us out. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody. Again, I, I uh, apologize for the, the bump in the road today. Uh, but I uh, appreciate you hanging in here with us. I hope we answered your questions well. If you have additional questions, please feel free to always email those to us. We will get them routed to the right person and get you an answer within a couple of days, if not sooner. And uh, we look forward to the closing of a school year. We hope that, uh, that your children uh, finish well, finish strong, and we hope you all have a great summer. We'll be, we'll be talking to you again soon. Again, thank you for your time today. Thank you for everyone joining us. When you exit the webinar, you'll have a brief survey. We ask you to please fill that out. It helps us to make sure that we're covering topics in future webinars that are important to you. Have a great day.